Welcome to IIT Bombay, one of India's premier academic institutions. IIT has several state-of-the-art laboratories and safety is a priority for us. So we have made a series of videos highlighting how to be safe. This video is about biosafety. Bio research laboratories use various infectious agents and handles human and animal fluids. Laboratories also work with recombinant DNA. The research activities have the potential to cause laboratory acquired infections and release of agents into the environment. It is essential to adhere to safe work practices while working in the laboratory. In this video, we present the following topics. Modes of entry of pathogens into the human body. Containment measures. Good microbiological practices. Safety precautions for working with shops. Proper use of biosafety cabinets. Transportation of biospecimens. Decontamination and segregation of biohazard waste. First aid measures. Modes of entry of pathogens into the human body. Pathogens and infectious agents can be transmitted into the human body via the following routes. Nasal cavity, oral route, open wounds, injuries on the skin, splashes to the mucous membranes. We will see these points in detail. Many activities like centrifuging, mixing and streaking of agar plates can produce aerosols which are invisible to the eyes. The pathogens can enter the body if these aerosols are inhaled. Consuming food in the laboratory and not washing hands after completion of work can cause infectious agents to be transmitted orally. Improper handling of contaminated shops like needles and scalpels can cause injury and transmission of pathogens into the body. Open wound or abrasion on the skin can transmit pathogens into the body. Splashes to the eyes, nose or mucous membrane can cause infection if the biospecimen being handled is infected. You must know the modes of entry and related hazards of the pathogen before you start working with the same. Containment measures We will now present about the containment measures. Containment of bio risks can be achieved by safe work practices, containment equipment and facility design. Depending on the risk level of the pathogen and other related hazards, facilities dealing with bio-research work are classified into the following biosafety levels. BSL-1, BSL-2, BSL-3, BSL-4. The containment measures increases from BSL-1 to BSL-4. Biosafety level 1 consists of work with microbes that pose little to no threat to healthy adults. The work is conducted on the lab bench. Biosafety Level 2 facility is used for work with agents that pose a moderate health hazard. The work is done inside a biosafety cabinet and entry to the area is restricted. Biosafety Level 3 facilities are used for conducting work on microbes that can cause serious or potentially lethal disease through inhalation. Some of the requirements for BSL-3 labs are double door entry, negative ventilation and use of protective wear. BSL-4 provides the maximum containment and is used for handling agents which cause fatal infections and for which treatment is not available. Good Microbiological Practices We will now see some of the good microbiological techniques to be followed while working in the laboratory. Always wear personal protective equipment while working in the laboratory. Always use laboratory coats or gowns and double gloves where required. Do not place laboratory coats in common areas. Sandals must not be worn in the laboratory as this will not offer protection from any spills. Always use toe covered footwear. Open containers or vials inside the biosafety cabinet whenever there is a risk of aerosol exposure. Containers used for storing biospecimens must be plastic. Glass material can easily break and cause a spill. Do not bring food and drinks into the laboratory. Wash hands after completion of the work and before leaving the laboratory. 
To prevent splashes to the mucous membranes, conduct activities inside a biosafety cabinet and wear eye protection. Precautions for working with sharps Injuries from contaminated sharps can transmit blood-borne pathogens and other infectious agents. Most common pathogens that are transmitted through injuries from sharps are Hepatitis B virus Hepatitis C virus Human immunodeficiency virus Some of the sharps commonly used in laboratories are needles, glass slides, scalpels and blades. Use of sharps must be avoided wherever possible. If it is necessary to use a needle, needles with blunt edge must be used wherever possible. Never leave needles unattended on the workbench. Keep puncture-proof bins near the work area within the arm's reach so that the syringe can be disposed of into the container immediately after use. The bin must not be overfilled. If you have to use scalpels, use disposable safety scalpels to prevent injury. Do not dispose of sharps into general waste containers. This can cause injury as well as infection to personnel who are handling these materials. Never recap syringes or try to remove them from the syringe as there are chances of injury during the same. Use tweezers to pick up contaminated sharps. Never pick up contaminated sharps with your hands. Proper use of biosafety cabinets Biosafety cabinets offer protection from aerosols and splashes and prevent contamination. The biosafety cabinets which are commonly used are the A-type and B-type. Before working with biosafety cabinet, make sure that you are familiar with the proper operation and safety precautions by referring to the user manual. Switch on the cabinet at least 5 minutes before starting the work. Decontaminate the work area before you start working in the biosafety cabinet. Keep all essential items in the cabinet before starting work and make sure that they are decontaminated. Airflow grills must not be obstructed and there must be no cluttering. Do not mix clean and contaminated items while working in the cabinet. At the end of the work, decontaminate the surface of the items before removing it out and also decontaminate the surface of the biosafety cabinet. Biosafety cabinets require periodic maintenance and testing to ensure its efficiency and integrity. Transportation of biosamples Improper methods used in transportation of biospecimens between laboratories can cause spills and contamination. Screw-capped tubes must be used as primary containers. Glass tubes must not be used for transporting specimens. Labels must be affixed on primary containers. Primary containers must be placed inside a leak-proof secondary container. Name of the laboratory and biohazard label must be displayed on the secondary container. Outer surface of the container must be decontaminated before transporting. Decontamination and segregation of biohazard waste Work surfaces must be decontaminated with a suitable disinfectant after completion of work. The method used for decontamination, the concentration and contact time will depend on the type of biological agent being handled. Yellow bags must be used for collecting biohazard waste for incineration. Contaminated sharps must be collected in puncture-proof container. All solid biohazard waste must be autoclaved before disposal. Autoclaves can cause serious injuries from steam exposure or rupture of containers. Use heat-resistant personal protective equipment while working with autoclaves. Store autoclaves in dedicated rooms. First Aid Measures in case of injury from any contaminated items, wash the area with soap and water. Report the injury to the principal investigator and to the medical officer immediately. In case of splashes to the eyes, flush the eyes continuously with water. Be prepared for dealing with spills. This can happen inside the biosafety cabinet or outside the cabinet. Let us summarize. You must be aware of the hazards related with the agents before you start working with it. Always adhere to safe microbiological practices while working in the laboratory. 
ensure proper segregation and decontamination of biohazard waste. Thanks for watching and be safe.